Hello everyone and welcome back to the Lens Studio Physics Game Tutorial Series. In this video we are going to add the rest of the wall colliders to the scene and we're going to script them so that they are placed dynamically no matter what the phone's resolution is. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is add an empty scene object and I'm going to name this physics scene and I'm just going to put all of the physics objects in this parent here so that we can have a little better organization. And then in here, I'm going to duplicate the ground plane. And I'm just going to rename that ceiling. And I'm going to put that really high up just for now. Then I'll duplicate that and rename it front wall. And then I'm just going to change the scale so that it is in front of the soccer ball and keeps it from moving too far forward. And I'm just going to add a really high distance on the Y value just so that it can never go over it. And I'll offset it by 20 units in front of the soccer ball. I'll duplicate it, rename it back wall, and I'll offset this one 20 units behind the soccer ball. So now it should stay in place in the front and back and not fall out. So now we need to add the left and the right walls as well. So I will do the same. I'll duplicate, rename it, and then I'll change the scaling so that it's on the left and the right side. And I'll just offset this by like 50 units on the X axis. And I'll duplicate it one more time, rename it right wall, and offset it again on the right side. And let's just do a quick test to see if this works. It looks like it does, but it's not perfect. So we're going to need to do a little scripting to make sure that it is put in the right place. So let's open up the game controller script. I'm going to create a function here called setup box positions. And I'm going to need to get the height of the device. So I'm going to create a variable called height. And I'm going to set it equal to 2 times the Z depth, which is going to be how far it is away from the camera. And then I'm going to multiply that again by the tangent of the camera's FOV divided by 2. This is just a specific calculation to determine the height of the screen. And then in the width, I'm going to multiply the height by the camera's aspect ratio. And that should give me an accurate reading of what the camera's resolution is. And now I'm going to input an array of scene objects. And this is going to be all the walls that we're going to be setting dynamically. So I'll start with the ground. Then I'll add the ceiling and the left and the right walls. And now that I have access to those, I'm just going to be setting their positions. So I'm going to do script.walls with the correct index. This one's going to be the ground plane. I'm going to get the transform, and then I'm going to set its local position. And we're going to create a new vector 3. So it's going to start at 0. And then we're going to do negative height divided by 2.5. And then the position on the z is going to be the z depth. And I'll just copy this. And I'll do the same thing for the ceiling, except I'm going to make this 1. And I'm going to do a positive height instead of a negative. And I'm also going to change the division to 1.5 just to make it go a little bit higher. And then we're going to do the left wall here. And instead of the height variable, we're going to do the width. And that's going to be on the x axis instead of the y axis. And it's going to be width. And we're going to do width divided by 1.5 again. And then we'll set the y axis to 0. And that should be good. And then finally, we're going to set the fourth wall, which is going to be the right wall. And all we have to do here is take out the negative in the width, and that should put it on the opposite side. And then we're going to run this function when the lens starts. So I'm going to create an onStart function, and I'm going to bind that to the onStart event. And then I will just call that function inside here. And now, when I save the script and I test it out, you can see that it's working just as it should. It's putting the walls right at the edge of the screen, and it's working just fine, except the ceiling's a little bit short. So I'm going to actually change this from divide to multiply, and then I'm going to maybe change the value to like 3 instead of 1.5. And that gives it plenty of room to fly up above in case the user hits the soccer ball really hard. And now you can see that I'm testing this out on different devices, and it still works just fine. You can see that the edge is right where it should be, no matter what the screen's resolution is. So that'll do it for this video, and in the next video, we are going to be creating the game loop so that the users can start and play over and over and over again. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.